These gentlemen have come all the way from China to talk to you guys about breaking Google Home and exploiting it with SQLite. Let's give them a gigantic round of applause. Have a great time. Smile. I'm going to take pictures. Have fun. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. We are very excited to share our research at DevCon 27. The title of our talk today is Breaking Google Home, Explore It with Solid Measuring Vulnerability. First, let me introduce my teammates and myself. We are senior security research at TensorBlade team, and this is my teammate, Chen Wenxiang. Now he's focusing on browser security and IoT security, and this is Niu Xiang. He is focusing on mobile security and IoT security, and my name is Wu Hui Yu. I'm a bug hunter and a GitHub runner, and also because I also speak of DevCon, having boss and POC. Next, I will introduce the Tencent Blade team. Our team was founded by Tencent Security Platform Department at 2017, and now we are focusing on the security research in areas such as AI, IoT devices, mobile devices, cloud, and blockchain. In the past years, we have reported more than 200 security vulnerabilities to many companies, such as Google, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and so on. Last year, we shared how to break Amazon Echo at the DevCon 26, so, can again, so we can again this year. And you can connect us at blade.tencent.com. Okay. Next, let's take a brief look at the outline. First, we will introduce the attack surface of Google Home smart speaker. Then, we will share the details on how to find and explore SQLite so and Curl. Finally, we will summarize our research. Okay, let's start with the first part. Smart speakers are the most popular smart home devices of the past few years. Amazon, Google, and some Chinese companies are the main players in this field. In the fourth quarter of 2018, Amazon and Google's market share has been very similar. After we shared, uh, after we shared how to break Amazon Echo and Xiaomi AI speaker in DevCon 26, we began to study the security of Google Home smart speaker. The Google Home family includes four devices, all of which have similar hardware, we choose the best selling Google Home Mini as the main test devices. The first part is about hardware analysis. We found that the Google Home Mini used the wireless CPU and Toshiba's flash chip, but we did not, did not find any debugging and flashing interface. So we can only choose to extract firmware directly from the flash chip. Similar to the Amazon Echo, we first use a heat gun to solder the chip from the board. By analyzing the data sheet of the chip, we find a test circuit of BGA67 chip. And the difference is that the pins of BGA167 chip are very thin. So we have not found an adapter that can connect the test circuit to the programmer. So we designed a new adapter. Its main function is to explore the pins of the test circuit to a large pitch. The pins so that we can easily connect the chip to the programmer. And this is the finished product that we finally produced. We connect it to the RT908H programmer which is a universal program that supports reading and writing most of flash chips. Finally, we got the RAM image data in Google Home's uh, flash chip. 
We also need to pass the OOB data and the ECC trig bits according to the specification in the data sheet and extract the complete system firmware. By analyzing the system files, you can know that Google Home is using a net Chromium OS. The main, the main function are implemented by the Chromium OS, by the Chromium browser. And the update speed will be a, a little slower than the Chrome browser. Okay, my part ends here, and, and my teammate Ni Yuxiang will continue to share the next part. Uh, thanks for your introductions. Next, uh, let's introduce the security overviews of Google Home. Uh, firstly, let's look at the security overviews of Google Home. On the OTA mechanisms, the firmware's related resource of Google Home is open to public. These resources uh, include bootloader, kernels, and related bin uh, binary programs, and some even has samples. Google Home uses the HTTP request to download the firmware. We can also simulate the request for device updates, the latest OTA package can be obtained by the curse command in the pictures um, below. So we can easily to get a firmware and then try to analyze the firmware. Um, through the analysis of firmware and related resource, we believe that the security mechanism adopted by Google Home is worth learning. About length, Enabling security boot on IoT devices in, is a good example. The bootloader, boot image, system images is protected by the security mechanism throughout the boot process. The details as follows. The bootloader and boot image use the same snatchers methods and are inspired with SHAs and ISA snatchers. The bootloader seen that there is no logic to provide unlocking. Uh, in addition, Google Homes also pro, uh, perform a Integrities uh, verifications on system image. Uh, let's look at the uh, main programs in the firmware. The firmware has uh, memory directories, as shown in these pictures. That contains the main program called Cut Shell. The program just like Chrome, so its program is protected by sandbox on Chrome OS. The sample mechanisms mainly include set ready, your namespace, and setcom BPF. In addition, the system also enables ASLRs and the uh, cardic shells also add annex and uh, stack galleries. Next, we will introduce the attack surface on Google Homes. Combined with, with existing security research and our testing, Google Homes attack surface include the following uh, four aspects. Google Home has multiple, multiple parts of uh, port opens. One of the port is the A008, is the HTTP servers. Uh, we can control some basic operations of Google Homes through these ports in the LAN. There is also a port of A009. The port is the target of our attacks using the CAD protocol. We will describe in the following sections. And the wireless protocol is also an attack surface. Google Home used the Marvel chip. Some idea about Marvel Wi-Fi and BLE firmware attack can be tried. It is also possible to try to uh, find the vulnerabilities of the bootloaders and let it load malicious firmware. Finally, we can try to find another uh, other uh, hardware interface. In these sections, we will show you how to extend the attack surface of Google Home. First, let's introduce the basic knowledge about the CAST protocol. Uh, Google allows developers to develop CAST APPs and publish it to App Store. In general, the CAST app includes senders and receivers. Sender devices may be mobile devices or PC running a Chrome. Uh, receiver is a Google's IoT device such as Google Home. The entire architecture is as follows. The user assess the sender application URL, and the sender application used the CAT protocol to find the receivers in the LAN. When the receiver uh, is discarded, the standard application will communicate directly with the URLs, uh, with the uh, reader applications on the receivers. 
with the CAS protocol. Uh, in detail, the Google Homes will prove the URL of each receiver application according to the CAS API ID and accept the receiver application through the Chrome renders. After our attempt, we found that uh, CAD protocol will have the following uh, security, uh, security risk, including the CAD app can be any web page. The CAD app is the app store may be malicious, uh, and uh, senders can directly trigger a CAD protocol, which may even require no user interaction. Based on this, uh, this security risk, we can govern an attack on a Chrome, a Google Home into an attack on a browser. Let's take a look at uh, some special states. The attackers is registered as the CAD developers. CAD application can be developed and distributed. When you publish an application, you need to specific uh, CAD receiver URLs. However, Google does not audio link or CAD APPs. Lens we can specific it as a web page in any context. Remotely trigger the Google Home to accept any web page. If if the attackers and the Google Homes are in the in the land, the attackers can also send a card protocol such as the launch APPs request. This request will directly trigger the Google Home accept to the card receiver URL. To make matters worse, if the routers in the victim's house homes uh, turn on the UPnP port forwarding, the attacker can also complete the remote sign attacks on the internet. The attackers modified cast your uh, receiver URL web page to a malicious uh, page lens Google Homes may assist in renders after visiting the page. So now we only need to uh, Chrome assist vulnerability to exploit Google Homes. Now Wenjiang chains will introduce uh, microns and other vulnerabilities. Um, okay, thank you for uh, the introduction. Now I will continue with uh, part three, um, fuzzing and uh, manual auditing SQLite and lab curve. Uh, first, why do I audit these two libraries? Um, because third part libraries are always sweet, they have less code and uh, focused functions, and almost every device has them installed. And the most important thing is Google Home or Google Chrome are using them too. Uh, before introducing the code audit part, I would like to mention some previous researches. Uh, first, Michael Zawitsky's fuzzing has significantly improved the uh, circularized quality. And then there's a talk on Black Hat in 2017, which also explains the idea of exploiting circularized. Uh, after that, there doesn't seem to be a lot of news about the vulnerabilities of circularized, but we have found some. In the next part, we will introduce the code auditing and the exploiting of Magellan, which is a set of vulnerabilities in SQLite, and Dias, which is a set of vulnerabilities in LabCurl. The Chromium project comes with a father for SQLite. Uh, we have made some simple changes to it, uh, such as adding some syntax-based files when we look back, we found that there were, uh, was a lot of crash files generated. However, these test cases can only trigger empty pointer dereferencing. One of these test crashes is caused by duplicate primary keys, and when I was bugging, I typed the first three create table statements to see what was going on in memory. However, I was surprised to find that the dot tables command shows six tables. The question is, uh, what those content segdr segments stand for? The SQLite manual shows that the tables are called shadow tables. There are five types of shadow tables. Content segdr segments are for FTS three or four, and state and doc size are FTS four only. However, because of those tables are treated like standard tables, you can create corresponding state and doc size table even you are operating on an FTS3 table. Uh, you can create state and doc size by simple, uh, by simple create a table statement because SQLite itself is doing this too. And FTS3 and 4 is sharing some code, which means state and uh, doc size might change the code flow in some conditions. 
For example, one of our exploits are simulating an FTS4 table on FTS3 environment. Uh, this is useful because some software like Chromium use only FTS3 and explicitly disabled FTS4. This would extend the attack surface by entering some code branch that should never be entered. The shadow table is used as a container to store the contents of the full text search metadata. What is shown on this slide is the definition and meaning of each shadow table. We can see that almost every shadow table has a field of type blob. That's because to support full text queries, FTS maintains an inverted index that maps from each unique term or word that appears in the dataset to the local locations in which it appears within the table contents. It is complicated, but all we know is that compared to the other fields, those blobs may have some important influence on FTS queries. In circulate, the raw binary data is typically represented in the form of X, single quotation mark, and uh, hexadecimal numbers. However, the blobs here are binary data to represent the entire B tree. Since it represents such a complex structure, is it possible to create a memory corruption vulnerability by destroying the data of the structure? Let's read about the document of the serialized data structure first. You can check the SQLite manual to easily get the definition. I will show you a simplified version so you can understand what I'm modifying when I'm trying to exploit them. Basically, I'm modifying the bytes with the different functional sections to mislead the code flow. The first segment B tree leaf nodes. The first term stored on each node, which is term one in the figure above, is stored verbatim. Each subsequent term is prefix compressed with respect to its, uh, to its predecessor. Interior nodes, non-leaf nodes, has different structure. And then the doc list format. A doc list consists of an array of 64-bit signed integers, serialized using the FTS var int format. Each doc list entry is made up of a series of two or more integers as follows. One, the doc ID value, and two, the zero or more term offset list. In general, those blobs are just serialized B tree data. When the SQLite wants to perform operations on those tables, it will simply deserialize or pass those blobs and get a complete B tree. Then I have found some problems. The problems are mainly treated to merge and match because they are deeply related to the B tree. Two of them merge the node of the tree, and other is to traverse the nodes of the tree to try to find the match to the content. Also, the last one is the crash I have mentioned before. It was that brought this series of problems into my attention. And software must enable FTS3 support and support external circle query to trigger these problems. Okay, the first one, and uh, 20346, which is also the main vulnerability we use later to exploit Google Home. It requires a lot of complex preconditions, that is, we have to carefully construct a lot of tables and content. But once the preconditions are met, vulnerability explosion will be very simple and stable. The vulnerability is located in the function FTS3 append to node. It can be triggered with a spatial semantic, the merge equals one two, which means the level to be merged. As you can see, this function will try to append a node to another, the node is stored in the blob, so this function and upper function will first pass in the B tree and then get the start position and the length of binary data of the node that will be processed. And last, perform the memory copy operation to copy them into a new blob that represents the new tree. Okay, let's go to its caller function, uh, truncate node. It will get the binary offset and learns from the blob data that will describe the node being processed. Then the node information is returned in a reader object passed to the vulnerable FTS3 append to node. To control the memory copy in append to node, we need to control an A doc list and an N doc list, which is returned from node reader next. The A doc list is the source of the char pointer to the blob data, and N doc list is the node size which are second and third parameter of memory copy, respectively. To control them is not a difficult thing. Let's read the code, then you will know why I'm saying that is easy. 
To save the space of storing an integer, SQLite so uses a variant integer algorithm. You can just consider fs get variant 132 as a function to convert a bunch of bytes into an integer. It will store the result in n suffix. Then it moves the current cursor by adding the content of bytes and it re read to i off. The data for a node is stored as a length following by corresponding data with exactly size of a length. Normally they should appear in pairs, but we can modify the blob to make the end of the blob boundary has only the length field but no data field. Okay, let's go to the append to node. Since uh, in the last step a dog list and n dog list is controlled, we can now overflow the buffer of p node a in line 310, or we can copy some raw memory data to it as long as it does not exceed the aligned value. Then we can query the new table to get the leaked raw memory. By setting up adjacent tables, we can overflow the function pointers of the table very uh, accurately to exploit a code execution. And here's another one, uh, 506 in function scan into real node, and the precondition of this one is rather simpler. All you need to do is modify the shadow table set, set a node in secdr to non root node. You can change the blob data to change the code flow. Query the modified table by keyword match, then the code will scan every node inside the B tree. Then the code will trigger memory corruption because it has many constrained conditions. It was considered to be very hard to exploit, um, but this one is, is uh, exploitable anyway. Uh, you can check the wonderful write up by a Korean researcher named Anki Chen. And last, uh, 20505. This one is very like to a combination of the previous two. The vulnerable function is uh, seg reader next. You can modify the shadow table and mislead the code flow. All these three vulnerabilities can be modified to leak wrong memories, so we can also use this to leak address of, uh, for example, functions, structures, global variables, constant variables to bypass the ASLR. And here's another one, lab curl. Um, our, tar our target is uh, remote code execution, but lab curl has already been used by a lot of users and their code it reads very quickly too. To find a vulnerable function, here are some guidelines for finding problems by reading the code quickly. The first, find the big functions. Most functions with a lot of lines is not recommended in software engineering and functions that are too long should be refactored into shorter function fragments. Usually such a large function is difficult to test and there will be a lot of attack surface. And most of the functions enabled in lab curl is related to remote interactions and communicate with the remote server more than once. After carefully sifting through the protocols, we confirmed that NTLM over HTTP was what we wanted to test. And here are those problems we have found in lab curl. We named them as DS, uh, name of another famous navigator. The first one, um, 890, is a vulnerability in NTLM type 2 message. It can leak at most 16.4 kilobytes client memory per request to attacker. The result is very like to the hard bleed, but is the client version. And the second one, 3822, is a vulnerability in type 3 message. It will result in a stack buffer overflow. LabCurse also wrote, wrote this in his blog and thought it's a very bad security issue. Okay, let me show you how this happened. The first one, the vulnerable function is in decode type 2 target. It reads a 32 bit integer from the type 2 message header. Then we know we can set target info offset with a larger value and target info length to a graphic value, which, if you add them together, an integer overflow will happen. The overflow result is very small and will pass the check in line 185. And next, memory copy will copy data out of bounds. For example, if we use the value above, it will ac actually copy data from the front of variable buffer in 32 bit environment. And then the data will be sent to the attacker in type 3 message, leaking maximum um, 64 kilobytes data per request to the attacker. And let's go to 3822. This vulnerability is located in a big function named curl create NTLM type 3 message. In the beginning, this function declares a lot of variable on stack memory. The NTLM 
buffer is a big buffer which has around uh, uh, for a kilobyte memory. Then the function tries to read the NT response length from the type 2 response which is sent from the server. Attack could return a value bigger than the buffer size to client. And next in line 779, this check should check if the size of the data is bigger than NTLM buffs remaining size. But the inexplicit sign unsigned cast prevents the check from operating correctly. This check compares two unsigned variable and a Marco NTLM buff size which simply defines a number, a thousand and uh, twenty four. But this value is a signed integer in the view of compiler. When unsigned and, and signed are compared in the same place, some of them must be casted in order to compare correctly. And this is a problem. The compiler prefers to convert signed to unsigned numbers. So if we have NT response length greater than the NTLM buff size, the result will be a large unsigned number. And it is, of course, bigger than the remaining size will pass the check. In line 7H1, because NT response length is bigger than the remaining size of NTLM buff, hence here will be a stack buffer overflow. When the code triggers a stack buffer overflow, the overflowed variant is in the middle of a lot of stack variables. Although the program may have stack cookies, an attacker could choose not to overflow that mesh bytes, but instead override stack variants and control the flow of the code. I have marked the position where, the, where it triggers the buffer overflow. You can see in this big function, there are, all, uh, there are almost 18 lines after it. And many of them are operating heap or stack memory, and the operating is based on the value of those stack variables. That's the reason why I say big function is never a good coding practice. Okay, my part is done, and uh, Li Zhang will go ahead to introduce how to exploit. Uh, thank you for my partner's introductions. Now, uh, let's review the following uh, vulnerabilities. The keys to the vulnerability trigger is how to use the insert state to control the variables used by our memory, co memory copy function, include PN, uh, P node A, P node N, and A dog leaks, N dog leaks. The insert data is as follow. First, the entire data is stored in the buffer of P node A, uh, we can control the size of the PNO A buffers by modifying the length of the insert date. Uh, in heap functions, we are able to allow P node A to the appreciate areas to cover the uh, target mem memory. In this case, uh, the orange colors in that I indicate that the size of P node N and P uh, N, N dog list, which is we are in type. And Douglas is used to control the lens to be overflow. Uh, P node N, which is the offset of the right overwritten memory areas. The green part is the A, A Douglas data, which can be used for our B read or our B write. The next session, uh, we, we will introduce the ideas of using these vulnerabilities. We expect expect to find a, a function pointers that can be used on a heap. When creating a FTS3 tables, the tokenizer is created by default. And the tokenizer default is simple tokenizer. Uh, as shown in the following pictures, simple tokenizer is a structure on the heap where it is a member's base points to the SQL trees tokenizer structures. The members P models or the SQL trees tokenizer structure points to the tokenizer models. The tokenizer models contain the some interesting function, uh, callback functions, such as the X create X opens among lens. When inserting the FTA tree tables, the X open callback functions will be triggered. Uh, if a function address of X opens can be modified to the uh, attributes. Uh, Expertise address the PCs can be hijacked. And how to use the uh, variables functions pointers for PC hijacking? Uh, here's two conditions need to be met. 
The first, after his overflow is necessary to be able to operate the FTH3 table. In addition, when hard drive needs to be complete before the memory is released, otherwise the crash will be interrupted. By analyzing the logical uh, memory copy to freeze, we found an interesting function uh, which performs a uh, a secure update operation before re resisting the memory, as shown in the, the blue tech code. Finally, we used the SQL triggers to perform the FTH3 table insert operation before the secure update operations and free memories. Since uh, triggering the X open callback functions so that the PCs can be hijacked. The next step is to make a memory uh, layout. The SQL logical of the cluster shell use TMLOX, a feasible uh, memory layout idea as follows. The first, by creating uh, mul multiple first uh, FTH3 tables, we will create multi multiple simple tokenizer structures, drop the previous uh, created FTH3 tables at the uh, appreciate time, uh, the simple tokenizer structures will be free. The uh, resigning payloads of the same size as simple tokenizer, it, it has the high uh, prob probabilities that payloads will be allowed to the previous release simple tokenizer structures. So our payloads has a greater chance of operating the simple tokenizer structures of existing FTH3 tables. With the uh, as secure triggers that perform the operations of FTH3 tables before the free, there is a change that the tokenizer model callback functions uh, will be triggered to hijack the PC. Uh, when we have the ability to hijack the PCs and control the R0 registers, we only need to be able to list information and bypass ASLRs. The previous sections uh, uh, also introduced. Uh, we can try to uh, adjust uh, the undocked P node A and list memory after heap. We need to describe the following two types of address: leaking the address of cut shells based on uh, based on this address and offset calculate the required RP gigabits. Uh, leading the address of the last heap according to this address and offset. The probabilities of calculating the address of the heap spray. The latest is the heap sprays and LPs. After these three steps, we can ask this in Google Home's renders. A uh, cut shell is a large binary program that contains many of the available LP gadgets. So the LP gadgets used cut shell is more stable and convenient. In the uh, in the pictures on the right, the red light uh, marks the red light marks the his brace unit, which face tokenizer models and RP gadget. The X create X open address in the face tokenizer model structures will be assigned the state private address. The blue light marks our face simple structure. Of the tokenizer structures, when the FTA3 tables operate can be triggered, SQLite will be get a malicious X open through the structures of sample tokenizers and then I see. <coughs> above, uh, above is the screenshot of our RC in cut shells. The read blocks on the left show that the register we can control. That, that they are R0, R11. The function object is read from the R11s and finally is go to BLX. Then, as a result, we have been able to hijack the PC. The image on the right uh, show, show the results of our shell codes. We execute uh, JavaScript codes for fetch URLs and uh, navigators app name in the exp doc HTML codes. Normally, uh, uh, navigator's IP NAND is read only and, uh, and is next step, but our shell codes change the IPP NAND to AA. 
Uh, let's look at some actual attack signs. There are three types of attack vectors that attack Google Homes remotely. First, the attacker is located in the LAN. The attacker send the launch app ID one command through a, a cut protocol, and Google Homes will pull the leak doc HTML on the application uh, application stop app stops according to the app ID and load it. At this time, the leak days can be obtained by the attackers. The second, the attacker send the Launch app ID to whose command uh, Google Homes loads exp doc HTML. So that's the RC happen. The entire process does not require user interaction. In the other two sense, you don't need to be on the same uh, on the same lens to start the attacks. The attacker inducts the victims to assess the URLs of the same application. And we can scan the networks on the routers. That uh, if the routers have the UPnP forwardings, try uh, we can try to launch remote remote attacks on the internet. Conclusion. Here the uh, here is the timeline of the Michelin. We have report lens in uh, November and is quickly fixed by SQLite and uh, Chromius in the December. Google's decide to get us a total 10,000 rewards for the batch of vulnerabilities, and they have a uh, and and then have a in enhancements. There is the defense in deep flag, this allowing modifying shadow tables from untrusted source. For backwards compatibility, is default off in the SQLite. So if you are using SQLite with FTS. You may want to enable this one to prevent the attacker from the modifying your shadow table. But uh, the good news is, is default on in, Google, in Chrome from commit in the last November. Here is the uh, timelines of DS. This quickly fixed and released by LabCruise in two weeks. Also, uh, uh, also, we have uh, noted the sensor to urge vendors dis disable the vulnerable FTA trees of web SQL before the patch come out if they don't use these features. And uh, we have not notified the security teams of Apple's, Intel's, Facebook's, and Microsoft about how to fix the program and how to mitigate the phrase in the center of their products. Uh, the other is the security is otherwise. The once enhance your assistance with the newest available defense in the mechanism in a time. The tools keep your uh, the the third pass libraries up to date. Please improve the quality of security auditing uh, auditing and testing of the third pass libraries. For fourth. Introduce security specifications into the developments and testings. Thank you.